Today, I want to talk to you about pancreatic cancer, why this cancer is troublesome, what symptoms it has, and whether it can be prevented. Many friends may think of Steve Jobs at this time, the inventor of the iPhone. However, in the eyes of doctors, he was a patient with low compliance. He suffered from a special type of pancreatic cancer, pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors. But instead of following professional advice to choose surgery, he turned to seeking supplements and alternative medical treatments, which is often referred to as desperate illness leading to desperate remedies. His pancreatic tumor was not very invasive, and it was discovered early with no evidence of metastasis. Had he undergone surgery earlier, with his financial power, perhaps he could still be alive today. Therefore, personality really determines fate, and money is not omnipotent. Returning to the main point, let's continue to talk about pancreatic cancer. The reason pancreatic cancer is said to be troublesome is that it is one of the deadliest cancers in the world, one of the cancers with the lowest survival rates, and one of the cancers that is difficult to detect early. It is the fifth most common cause of cancer death in the UK and the third in the USA. Statistics show that this disease most often occurs in developed countries. But research also finds that pancreatic cancer rarely occurs before the age of 40, and more than half of the cases of pancreatic cancer occur in people over the age of 70. No matter what, we all hope such things never happen to us. Because most pancreatic cancers are aggressive, they spread to other organs and are almost impossible to reverse. Therefore, understanding the high-risk factors for pancreatic cancer, understanding the common symptoms and signs of pancreatic cancer, will help us better prevent pancreatic cancer. And to urge friends with symptoms to see a doctor as soon as possible and to undergo relevant medical examinations as early as possible. The causes of pancreatic cancer are many and complicated, but no specific factor can be clearly identified as a cause. Current medical research has listed some high-risk factors, and I will further explain them to you here through some medical papers. The first high-risk factor is smoking. Yes, you heard it right, smoking is a high-risk factor for lung cancer, and it is also a high-risk factor for pancreatic cancer. Statistics show that about 25% of pancreatic cancer cases are related to smoking. A paper published in 2011 wanted to assess the dose-response relationship between smoking and pancreatic cancer and examine the impact of time variables. They analyzed data from 12 case control studies of the International Pancreatic Cancer Case Control Consortium, which included more than 6,000 cases of pancreatic cancer and over 12,000 controls. Their research conclusion was that current smoking is associated with a doubling of the risk of pancreatic cancer, and the risk increases with the amount of smoking and the duration of smoking. After quitting smoking for 20 years, the risk of pancreatic cancer reaches the level of never smokers. A similar paper was published in 2020. Their research results were, compared to non-smokers, smokers, whether the smoke is inhaled into the throat or into the lungs, whether or not they use filters, have an increased risk of pancreatic cancer. The highest risk of pancreatic cancer among current smokers is in black smokers, followed by blonde smokers. If parents smoke, children's exposure to tobacco smoke during childhood is also associated with an increased risk of pancreatic cancer. So you might be curious, the smoke only goes into the lungs, how does it increase the risk of pancreatic cancer? This is because the various carcinogens in the smoke circulate throughout the body through the bloodstream and reach the pancreatic tissue. They can bind with the DNA of pancreatic cells, causing gene mutations and chromosomal instability, thereby promoting the transformation of normal cells into cancer cells. And smoking can cause oxidative stress and chronic inflammatory responses inside the body, which will damage the internal environment of the pancreas and promote the occurrence and development of cancer. The chemical substances in the smoke can also cause vasoconstriction and increase the possibility of thrombosis, which will reduce the blood supply to the pancreas, affect the metabolism and repair mechanisms of pancreatic cells, and at the same time reduce the ability to remove harmful substances. More importantly, the chemical substances in the smoke will also affect the immune surveillance function of the body, weakening the immune system's ability to clear cancer cells. The second high-risk factor is obesity. A paper published in 2011 by pooling case control study data from the Pancreatic Cancer Cohort Consortium explored the association between body mass index, other human measurement factors, and the risk of pancreatic cancer involving 2,170 cases. The study's conclusion was, 
body mass index is positively related to the risk of pancreatic cancer. In addition, centralized fat distribution may increase the risk of pancreatic cancer, especially in women. And the study also mentioned that obesity in youth may have a more profound impact on the risk and age of onset of pancreatic cancer compared to obesity in old age. A paper published in 2022 also mentioned that, based on the 2020 report from the Global Cancer Observatory and the Global Health Observatory database, the incidence of pancreatic cancer is positively related to obesity, lack of physical activity, and hypercholesterolemia. They found that a body mass index, BMI, greater than or equal to 30 is related to a higher risk of pancreatic cancer PDAC, a body mass index, BMI, of 25 to 30, a female waist circumference of greater than or equal to 95 centimeters, and metabolic syndrome also increase the risk of disease. In some animal studies and human studies, it has been found that obesity is closely related to pancreatic cancer, possibly due to insulin resistance and hyperinsulinemia involved, long-term high levels of insulin and its analog insulin-like growth factor 1, IGF-1, stimulate pancreatic cell proliferation, promoting the occurrence and development of tumors. On the other hand, it may be due to chronic low-grade inflammation in obese friends, which will lead to enhanced inflammatory responses in pancreatic tissue, promoting cell proliferation and tumor occurrence. There are also secretion products of fat cells, such as obesity will increase the level of leptin while reducing the level of adiponectin. Among them, high levels of leptin may indirectly promote tumor growth by promoting cell proliferation and inhibiting cell apoptosis. The third high-risk factor is type 2 diabetes. A meta-analysis published in 2005, based on previous 36 studies, wanted to understand the relationship between type 2 diabetes and pancreatic cancer. The result of the data analysis was that patients diagnosed with type 2 diabetes for more than 5 years had a 50% higher risk of malignant tumors compared to those diagnosed within the past 4 years. They believe that there is a certain causal relationship between type 2 diabetes and pancreatic cancer. A paper was also published in 2023, and they wanted to understand the relationship between the age of onset of diabetes, or the duration of diabetes, and the subsequent risk of pancreatic cancer. A total of 420,000 new type 2 diabetes patients were included in the study. In eight years of follow-up, a total of 1,056 cases of pancreatic cancer were found. And they also found that the incidence of pancreatic cancer increases with age, and the incidence is significantly higher in the elderly T2DM population. However, the relative risk of pancreatic cancer is negatively related to the age of onset of T2DM, with a higher standardized incidence rate observed in the 20 to 54 age group. No matter how you say it, the risk of pancreatic cancer will increase at any stage of diabetes. Therefore, they believe that type 2 diabetes is positively related to the risk of pancreatic cancer. Long-standing type 2 diabetes, like obesity, has similar mechanisms to promote the generation of pancreatic cancer, and long-term high blood sugar itself will also increase the risk of pancreatic cancer. And more and more epidemiological data also show that, due to unknown mechanisms, pancreatic ductal adenocarcinoma PDAC is also a cause of diabetes. The fourth high-risk factor is drinking and chronic pancreatitis. This study says that compared to light drinking of less than one drink a day, heavy drinking of six or more drinks a day is related to an increased risk of pancreatic cancer, while low to moderate drinking does not seem to increase the risk. Chronic pancreatitis also increases the risk of pancreatic cancer. An analysis of data from 10 case control studies showed that individuals with a history of chronic pancreatitis have a 2.71 times higher risk of pancreatic cancer. And like type 2 diabetes, pancreatitis can also be caused by pancreatic cancer, so new pancreatitis may also be a sign of a pancreatic tumor. The fifth point is genes and genetic factors, as well as other small probability risk factors. From the above content, we can see that some risk factors are beyond our control or there is no need to worry too much or spend a lot of effort to intervene. But the four risk factors mentioned earlier, long-term smoking, excessive drinking, unchecked weight gain and accumulation of body fat, as well as long-standing type 2 diabetes, are things we can try to intervene and do well in the prevention work of pancreatic cancer. Next, let's talk about the common symptoms and signs of pancreatic cancer. But first, I want to emphasize one point, pancreatic cancer does not have exclusive symptoms and signs, 
and most pancreatic cancers also have no obvious symptoms in the early stage, you can't feel any changes on your belly. Therefore, the content mentioned below cannot be used as the only basis for diagnosis. If you find that you have similar performances, please go to a gastroenterologist or general surgeon for consultation in time. I think the first common symptom of pancreatic cancer is unexplained weight loss, and it may also appear simultaneously with fatigue and a decline in energy. For obese friends, weight loss is a good thing. However, if you have not made any effort, but find that your weight is dropping significantly unintentionally, this may not be a good thing. If you also feel disgusted with food and have no interest in the foods you used to like, this may mean that the digestive function is impaired. Because the pancreas has two major functions. One is the exocrine function, which will produce pancreatic amylase, pancreatic lipase, pancreatic protease to help digest the starch, fat, and protein in food. If there are not enough digestive enzymes, the body cannot extract enough nutrients from the food. Another is the endocrine function, which produces insulin and glucagon. These two hormones control the uptake of sugar in the blood, as well as the release of glycogen from the liver. Since the body needs sugar as fuel, if the intake and release process of sugar encounters obstacles and eventually leads to a lack of energy in the cells, it will force the body to look for other energy sources, such as body fat and muscle, ultimately leading to weight loss. The second common symptom is pain in the upper abdomen, which may be a little to the left or may be a little to the right, depending on the specific location of the tumor in the pancreas. The pain may initially be intermittent, very slight, and not easy to detect, as the condition progresses, the pain may gradually increase and become persistent. If the pancreatic tumor grows further, when it compresses the common bile duct, causing bile stasis, bile cannot be effectively released into the intestines. This will cause bilirubin to accumulate in the blood. Excess bilirubin will enter the surrounding tissues, causing the skin and the scara of the eyes to turn yellow. This is also the third common symptom of pancreatic cancer that we are talking about jaundice. At the same time as jaundice, there is also a darkening of the urine color. Normal urine is usually clear to light yellow. Due to the high content of bilirubin in the blood, some unbound bilirubin will enter the urine through the kidneys, making the urine color darken, turning dark brown or strong tea color. Due to biliary obstruction, there is not enough bile entering the intestines, so the stool will not be stained with bile pigments. So at this time, the color of the stool will become lighter, or even a pure white stool. When the pancreas cannot effectively secrete digestive enzymes, when bile cannot flow normally into the bile duct, the fats you eat will not be effectively processed. They will eventually be expelled from the body with the stool. This may cause diarrhea problems, the stool is very smelly, and it looks greasy. For some friends, there may also be symptoms of itchy skin, unstable blood sugar, and many other manifestations. But no matter how you say it, Pancreatic cancer may have the symptoms mentioned above, but the appearance of these symptoms does not necessarily mean pancreatic cancer, you need to understand this. And to put it bluntly, when obvious symptoms really appear, it often means that pancreatic cancer has entered the middle and late stages, and treatment is very difficult. So I think that the cost of prevention is the lowest, and prevention is also something that everyone can easily do. If you have obesity problems, Please be sure to pay attention to the importance of diet and exercise, control your mouth, move your legs, eat pure natural food, eat nutritious food. You can also consider trying intermittent fasting, trying a low-carbohydrate diet under the guidance of professionals. For some friends, if used properly, these methods can indeed help control weight. If you have type 2 diabetes, please be sure to pay attention to the doctor's advice, please be sure to follow up regularly and monitor blood sugar. If economic conditions permit, if you belong to the high-risk groups mentioned above, and your age is over 40, then I think you can also add tumor marker testing and abdominal ultrasound and other examination items to your annual physical examination as a reference index for screening abdominal tumors.